It's a drama coming to you from Taranaki, New Zealand. Hello. Oh, Daddy, I love you. Mother thanks you. All right, Mr. DeMille, I'm ready for my close-up. Hello. In this week's episode, I am joined by a guest. Her name is Jen and she's from the YouTube channel A Thousand Words. She does New Zealand content. She's absolutely fabulous and I love her. We're going to be talking today about New Zealand kids. As parents, we're going to be discussing the difference between New Zealand kids, British kids and South African kids and how they're all raised. You are going to love today's show. So let's jump straight in and I'll see you on the other side. Hello and welcome to the It's a Drama podcast. I'm Liz and today I've got a special guest on, Jen. Hi there, I'm Jen and I have a channel called A Thousand Words. I am also an immigrant like Liz. I'm originally from South Africa and I spent 11 years in England and then moved to New Zealand in 2011. So on my channel I have just sharing our life in New Zealand some lifestyle content and also moving to New Zealand themed content. Yeah, yeah. that's where I'm that's where I found you originally <laughs> yeah. because I was like googling moving to New Zealand and you know once we'd moved to New Zealand and I found this this woman and I was I was hooked to your channel and then um, a friend actually contacted me and said you do know that Jen lives in Taranaki don't you and I was like oh, really and for the longest time I was so scared I told you it's so silly I was so scared to contact her because like you had all these thousands of subscribers and I just thought you were just gonna go oh go away little flea you know I don't want to talk to you <laughs> And you were just lovely. And yeah, we've become friends and we've made coffee, had coffees together. And because we're both mums, we thought it would be a really cool thing to do to talk about how different the New Zealanders are with their kids compared to the UK and South Africa. So it's yeah. always a, a, a nice juicy topic, this, especially if you move into New Zealand with kids and you're wondering, mm. you know, how they're going to fit in and how they've been brought up and things like that. So we're going to I'm going to try not to waffle. I just said to Jen, you know, I, I know I do tend to go on a little bit. And you're so, so do I. You're, so, yeah, but you're nice and structured, so I'm going to try and keep myself in tabs. Um, and we're just going to jump into the first one of why New Zealand kids, they seem to have been raised differently, is I think New Zealand kids, compared to the UK, I don't know what this is like in South Africa, they seem to have a lot more freedom here in New Zealand. Well, I did my parenting in England and New Zealand. So right. I can't really even... Oh, didn't you have children in South Africa? No. So right. when we moved to New Zealand, my boys were six and nine. So I had my kids in England. Right. And I left South Africa in 1999. So it's a blur. I was never a parent there, but I don't even really remember life there. So Do you not? Do you not me, remember being a child Not there? really. Kind of, but not in a way that is relevant and relates to right. me as a parent. Okay, yeah. yeah so really, it. I would be comparing England to New Zealand, but I totally agree with you. The kids here seem to be more independent and yeah. they'll walk to the shops or they'll walk to school by themselves. And not only is that kind of, you'll know, like not really accepted in England, but in some instances it's not even allowed. Like the teacher has to make eye contact before sending the child yeah. out. They, they couldn't just walk home by themselves. No. No, no, I, we, we've talked about this lots of times, like before, you know, I've, I, I won't tell you the same old story, but that time when we like, I was late to pick Tess up and then, yeah, half an hour went by and I just got there and it was like, everyone was just na, 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 na. And I was like, oh, yeah. you know, where's my child? <laughs> you yeah. Know? Um, but yeah, they're just, they're, like you say, just being, a, my, my brother came over from England a, a few years ago and he's got four kids, four, I think there are, I think the youngest was about five and the oldest was about 10. And they were staying with my mum and mum said, oh, why don't they nip up to the four square and get an ice cream? And he said, yeah, hang on, I'll, I'll, I'll get my bag yeah. and we'll go up. And yeah. she's like, no, no, just let them go on their own. And he Unheard of. He yeah. couldn't believe it. He was just like, what, you know, you know, it's, it's weird, isn't it? It's good for them, though, because how are you going to learn to navigate oh, life absolutely. Unless, unless you let to absolutely. do that? Absolutely. Absolutely. And I don't know if you what it was like growing up. I know you just said you couldn't remember, but in the 1970s in, in Britain, you were allowed to do that. We went well, everywhere on our yeah, own. Yeah, in the 80s in South Africa, it was the same. We'd go places on our bikes yeah. and, yeah. You didn't you didn't tell your mum and dad where you were going, did you? You just like, oh, yeah, I'm just going out yeah. to play next minute, 20 miles away, riding yeah. someone's horse. <laughs> yeah, as a child, that was how I grew up. But by the time I'd become an adult and the, the whole landscape had changed in mm. South Africa and now you couldn't allow your kids the same independence. It's just not safe. Mm. So, yeah. Yeah. And the same, and the same with you. That certainly my experience, anyway. I remember everything that we're saying here is our personal experience, and certainly my experience. I wouldn't let my kids out of my sight in the UK. 
I just wouldn't. Yeah. And I hated myself for that. I read the book Free Range Kids when we lived in England. Yeah. And in the book, she brings up the topic of other people getting involved. So you may be okay with your kids free ranging and being independent and walking to school by themselves, but other people will get involved. Where's your parent? Are you okay? Who can I phone? Oh, okay. So yeah. I kind of felt that even if I was okay with it in England, it wouldn't be acceptable. Right. Whereas here, people just wouldn't bat an eyelid. No. And it's safe for them to walk to school by themselves yeah. and to do these things. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, that, that's a big, big difference that you'll notice yeah. if you bring in kids to New Zealand. Okay, number two, and I've got to talk to you about this because this is, a, I don't know if it's a South African thing. I heard it on a South African channel is <laughs> no spanking. So yeah. um, <laughs> I was watching this YouTube video and it's like, okay, if you're going to bring your kids to from South Africa, unfortunately, you're not going to be able to give them a good spanking. And I was like, did I just hear that right? You know, it's just like, yeah. but... Yeah, I mean, yeah. In South Africa, I don't know. Like I said, now what it's like, mm. but back in the day, smacking is what they call it. Yeah, is or was just normal and what you did. Do you think? And 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 do you know what? Again, I don't know why I've just said that. Oh, I don't know why. I, I don't know why I said that because when I was a kid, I got a good clip around the ear for being naughty. You know, and it'd just be like, yeah. "You're going to get a smack," and it was nothing. You're just like, "Yeah, okay, I'm going to get a smack." Even the teachers could give you a smack, couldn't they? Back oh, in yeah, the we used to get hit with metal rulers on our hands yeah. by the teachers. And it's not a, like, I don't think it's okay. So mm. I'm quite okay with being here and not being allowed to smack my kids no, because no. I wouldn't anyway. No, no. But I know for some people that is an I'd issue. I want to sometimes, though. <laughs> Everybody want to. wants to sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> if you lived in South Africa, kid. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's like, yeah. obviously I'm just joking, but it's just like, yeah. So I don't know if that's, they just don't seem to, you know, no one, but I don't know if that's an age thing, a generation thing. Like, have we moved on from that all over the world? Be interesting to see, wouldn't it? I like, don't know, because I did a video, Seven Reasons Why New Zealand Might Not Be For You. And in there I mentioned, if you want to smack your kids, it might not be for you because it's not okay here. Right, okay. And... Most people were like, well, I wouldn't smack them anyway. Why Why would you include that? But mm. a few people were, it seemed like a deal breaker, like yeah. people who commented. So yeah. I guess it's a thing some places yeah. that I don't know if they don't know how else to parent and that's mm. why it would be a deal breaker. But mm. like I said, worth mentioning. Yeah, definitely worth mentioning. But, oh, I've just got to tell you this quick story actually about, and this is this is just one of those things that when Sonny, when I lived in, in, in England with Sonny and he was like, literally he was, I, he doesn't even remember this. He's lying. He's lying when he tells me this. But this is what he goes around telling everyone, right? This is what he's saying. So he was, when Tess was pregnant, when I was pregnant with Tess, he was three. So he was three years old. She was born in June. So it was the middle of the summer, right? Yeah. And what happened is I was heavily pregnant with Tess. Literally, I had about two weeks to go. And he was just being a little bugger. He was just <laughs> playing up no end. And I said, in a minute, you're going to go and stand outside and you won't be allowed to come back in. And he wouldn't stop playing up and he wouldn't stop messing about. I said, right, come on, outside. I pulled the slide door open. I said, outside, out you go. Out the back. Out the house, yeah, in our garden. So he's not... So it's not on the front doorstep. No, no, no. He's in the <laughs> bloody garden. This swings, this slide. Yeah, on a hard ship. <laughs> <laughs> and I slid the door, the glass door, so we could see each other. I said, you stay out there until daddy comes home, you know? So, right? Safer for him out there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> he stayed out there for about, what, 10 seconds or something. He tells everyone, Jane. That he's traumatised. Oh, it. yeah. He's damaged for life by that now. He tells everyone it was snowing. Oh, yeah. In snowing, June. Snowing, snowing okay. in June, yeah. Yeah. You whacked me and you pushed me out the door. And I'm like, <laughs> you've got to be really careful what you're telling people. <laughs> none of that happened. No, none of that happened. So, anyway, that was a funny story. Just deviating a little bit. Right, number three. Um, New Zealanders, I found, with their kids, really, really encourage independence. Yeah. Massively, hey? Over here, I find it's very much a thing that they'll send the kids outside to play mm. year round. Yeah. And that was quite different for me because, like I said, my kids were nine and six when we moved over. They didn't even know how to play outside by themselves. Did they not? Because in England, most of the year, the weather's rubbish. Mm -hmm. And for quite a few years, we lived in a terraced house, so we didn't even have a garden. It was like a concrete patch at the back. Right. And so they just didn't know how to play outside. Oh. When I was pregnant with Noah, we took Daniel, who had just turned three, to South Africa. We went there for Christmas and he was playing outside and fell and skinned his knee. And it was like the end of the world because yeah. he'd never had a skinned knee before. Right. 
So, yeah, I think from very young, they send them out to play mm -hmm. in the garden. They don't shut the door and abandon their child and of traumatize course. them. Kick them. <laughs> snow, snow. But yeah, they need to get on with it and play. They don't entertain their kids here. And, no, no. And like we said, they walk to school. So I, I would agree with that. They yeah. encourage independence from a young age mm. and to like help out in the house and things. Yeah, that's the other thing, isn't it? Give them jobs and make them do it. And I think one of the biggest things that really took me back was when I'm, when we dropped the kids off at school in the UK, you take them in and you had like their little lunch boxes and their bags and you'd walk walk into the school, they'd shoot off, disappear, you wouldn't see them again and you're left hanging. Hang the coat. Yeah, do you remember? <laughs> you're hanging the coat up and you're hanging their lunch box and I'm putting it in there and New Zealand, I brought Tess to school, Sunny to school and it was just, you can go now mum. I was like, oh, I'll just put her back. No, no, she'll do that. Yeah. And I was like, she's only five, like, you know, and no, no, she'll do that. How brilliant. Yeah. How fantastic. And so they grow up, the kids always being able to do that you know it's not uncommon for them to come home and make a sandwich and yeah and again Jen and I don't want to keep going oh you know <laughs> back in the day but this is how I feel that's how it used to be yeah. first didn't it and they have to learn at some point so if it's encouraged as just part of the culture mm. it's easier to teach them all along than at some point to go right now you need to learn how to yeah when you were in South Africa did you did your parents take you to school or did you walk to school or we campus? walked to school yeah and some of the time my mom was working, so we were latchkey kids, came mm. home, have a key. If you forgot your key, you'd have to break in or wait outside, mm, mm. sort yourself out, make your lunch. Can mm. you imagine doing that in England now? No. Going, no. oh, I'm not home. I'm not home, so just wait outside till I get home. No. It just never happened, no. would it? Hasn't done us any harm, Jen. <laughs> Okay, right. I love talking about this subject, honestly. I'm taking... In my day. I'm telling you, it's one of those bitter old women you talk about how it's better in my day. Anyway, so... Yeah. All right, number four. Oh, I love this one. The big thing that stood out... So actually, it was to my kids first rather than to me, was in England, in the UK, if you wanted a play date, my kids would say, oh, can, you know, can I go and play with Niall? And I'd say, yeah, I'll arrange it with his mum. And he'd be like, yes, you're the oh, social secretary. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and he'd be like, okay, oh, yeah, we can make it in two weeks at two o'clock, you know, on a Saturday. And that's, okay, you're going over to play in two weeks. They came here. Now, I don't know if this <laughs> is like a normal thing in New Zealand or if it's just where we lived in Orkora because it's smaller. But they would be like, do you want to come over and play tonight? Yeah. And that was it. And yeah. then they were like, oh. I'm going to their house tonight. And my kids couldn't believe it. They loved it. Yeah, that it's just casual and drop yes. in. And yeah. some kid will come up your drive on a bike saying, is Noah home? And yeah. off he'll go. And Yeah. yeah. And there isn't that. And again, I don't know. Maybe leave a comment. If you're living in the UK and, and you've got kids, just let me know. Is that normal? Because to me, that was you had to arrange it way yeah. in advance. Did yeah. you find the same? Yes. Your phone is full of contacts like... Robert's mum, mm. Tony's mum, yeah. Michael's mum, yeah, yeah. yeah, because you would be arranging it and it will be scheduled and whether or not they're staying for tea. Yeah, and, exactly, yeah. yeah. And that's the other thing that really took me by surprise is in the UK, if a kid goes back to someone's house after school, they bloody well stay in for dinner. <laughs> don't, don't send that kid home hungry, I'm telling you. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. expect you to give them their tea. But it's a big event, isn't it? Oh, oh yeah. I'm going to so-and-so's yeah. house and I'm staying for dinner. Yeah. And yeah. In New Zealand, no, they come out, they have a little play and then they come home and it's yeah. all very casual. It's dinner so. time, time for you to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but that's how we grew up. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was. It was just like have a little play and then go home and, you know, yeah, yeah absolutely. And neither is kind of better or worse, really. It depends on what you are used to. Oh, I mean, I like the casualness yeah, and that. I do. Someone could unexpectedly drop in and entertain your child. But then but... I'd have a fit if someone did that to me. Can you imagine? someone just turning up at my door going hi Liz <laughs> yeah but I, I find drop-ins are more common here yeah and also I don't like that's it. why we live yeah. up on the hill like the text at least I know you're coming <laughs> <Exactly. laughs> yeah. I've got things to do <laughs> <laughs> you made me laugh the other day because you we were talking me and Jen were talking on the phone just quickly tell you this and you hit phone by accident <laughs> and, I like, and then I was like oh. I'm so sorry my finger slipped and you were like don't do that to me <laughs> So like, what the hell? She's phoning me. What's happening? Yeah. I wouldn't do that to you. I would text you to say, can I call? Yes. I wouldn't just call. No, me neither. I'm only joking, but it's just like that. It's funny, isn't it? Yeah. Right, okay. Hang on, what have I got for number five? Stay around family. Yeah, just I find that the New Zealanders, they're big into their family, their aunties, their cousins. Oh, he the knows. Fano, yeah, the extended. The fano, yeah. yeah, exactly. And it's just, I, I, I suppose, um, 
I don't know what your situation was like in the UK. Did you live near family or? Because we didn't, so. I had an aunt f- about five hours away mm. and a couple of cousins also about five, six hours away. So, yeah, having kids without family around is different. You don't have the uncles and aunties and no. grandma. And, you know, there were times where I would say to Grant, my husband, I would say, if we had family nearby where I could phone and say, please take the kids this weekend, this would be that weekend. Yeah. But we didn't have that option. So you just have to push through. But I do agree with you that here people tend to live near each other. Mm. I don't know if they go away and then come back I when know. they want to start I a know. family. But That's what, exactly what I was thinking. Like, do because New, New Zealanders travel a lot, don't they? Well, yeah. A, a, the majority of New Zealanders are well travelled. Like abroad as well as within New Zealand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like you say, do they go travelling and then come back and think, I want to be raise my family around my own family, you know? So that just that to have yeah. that extended, I miss it so much. I mean, my look, I'm really, really lucky because my mum lives literally just. But I don't know how I would feel if it was, you know. I don't know if it's it. It must be difficult to. It's hard. It's very hard yeah. because your friends become your family, but it is different. They don't love your kids the way family would. No, it's it's just not the same. And we've already said once. That, our boys settle down at least the first one because they might settle in two different areas. Mm. But once one of them settles down and starts a family, we want to move there to be near them mm. if they don't do that near us. Yeah, that's exactly what. What would you do if one of your boys said, we're moving to South Africa? Uh, South Africa, I would forbid. It's more <laughs> likely to be England. Forbid them going? I'd, or for- just... I'd forbid it. <laughs> just, yeah. like, no. Just bar the airport. <laughs> it's- yeah, we didn't go through everything we went through to take you out of South Africa. Well, they weren't born yet, but yeah. we had them in mind. We moved out of South Africa knowing we wanted to start yeah. a family and we yeah. didn't want to raise our family there. Fair enough. So yeah. if they right, were to go England, back. What about if they went to the UK or something like that? I mean, you have to accept it, don't I you? I know. We were watching that programme last night on TV, you know, that Wanted Down Under. It's yeah. a TV, it's a British TV series about people who want to move to New Zealand or Australia and they go for a week. I mean, what can you see in a week? How and they stupid. always show them Auckland. I know. And they're like, oh, we can't afford this. I'm like, there's more to New Zealand yeah. than Auckland. Come yeah. on. Yeah. And then they show the family back home and the oh. family are like, we don't mind if you go, but it's going to break our hearts. It. It's awful. It's just, it's yeah. horrible. Yeah. Me and Brian just sitting there shouting at the telly, just don't listen to them. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Yeah. So um, she who has her mum around the corner. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> So, but I said to Brian, that's how I'd be. If Sonny said to yeah. me or Tess said to me, I'm moving back to England, I'd be like straight on that telly going, please don't go. <laughs> yeah. I think we would work very hard to design a life where we could spend half the year there and half the year here. That would be ideal, wouldn't it? Yeah. 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 I find the biggest thing and, you know, the hardest thing, I was talking to a friend about this the other day, actually, she's from South Africa, and she said, the hardest thing I find is when your kids are growing up and they've got their granddad living over the road or their uncle, you have that extra help for discipline as well. You know, you can say yeah. to your uncle, you know, your brother, can you just have a word with him? Because he's really playing out. I and mean, it's like, if your uncle told you off, that was... And you listened, yeah. didn't you? You know, Because it does take a village. And I find the culture in New Zealand is more like that. The village yes, will get involved so and I. it's more accepted. Yeah, yeah. But I completely agree with you because I have a 19-year-old and a 16-year-old. Mm-hmm. And at age 15, 16, in a boy's development, they kind of detach from dad, the importance... Yes and attach that importance to other male role models and uncles and grandfathers and they become very important yeah. and we don't have that no, no. so we're just talking about it in the car on the way here I was with Noah and talking about it saying you know I, I do feel bad that he doesn't have that and that it becomes we do have male friends obviously and you know church leaders and whatever but I feel I feel the lack even if he doesn't because he doesn't he's never missed it you know he doesn't know what he's missing mm. Yeah. But it is so important and it places an extra responsibility to build that network of friends yes. who can be family. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. And that's really interesting what you say about boys because Sonny is nearly 20 and I remember, I, I absolutely 100% agree with you there. Yeah, you yeah. do, you miss that. You know, I remember pushing Sonny towards his, you know, his drama teacher or his karate uh, instructor, anyone that can, they, they, they do need that role model, don't they? That's outside of the parents, You're absolutely yeah. right. Yeah, they do. Yeah. I didn't think of that. They do detach themselves. So, yeah, yeah New Zealanders do, um, especially the Māori culture, they're very, very family orientated, aren't they? There's, you know, they just, yeah. they seem to just all raise each other and just help, you know, um, yeah. raising a family. And it's just... It's just beautiful and it is something that you miss when you come to New Zealand and you yeah. haven't got that 
in saying that, we didn't have it in the UK either, because like you, we were five hours away from our family. But mm. anyway, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, number seven. You told me this one about sunscreen. Oh, you have to be so vigilant. You can't just send your kids out. No. It's sunscreen and multiple applications, and you have to be on it. Yeah, yeah. And the it's New Zealand no joke. parents are spot on there, aren't they? Yeah, and... People coming over from Britain don't understand. You can't really understand the sun until you've experienced no. it. I had a friend no. visiting from Lancashire and we went to the beach and it was it was December, January, so the height of summer. Boiling, yeah. And I said, here's some sunscreen. Do you need some sunscreen? You want to put this on before we go to the beach? And she said, no, I think I'll... I'll have about 20 minutes of sun and then mm. I'll put some on. And I was like, no, you won't. You'll put some on now. Yeah. And she slathered up with factor 50 and she still burnt to like blister mm. stage because she was so white. Yeah. And it's no joke. No. So, yeah, sending your kids out to play is great, but you you need to prep them. Yeah, you do. And I think the New Zealand, that's what I like about the New Zealand parents is that even when they went over to that play date, they would yeah. always be like, you know, boys, put your sunscreen on and, you know, get your hat on and make sure you're covered yeah. up. And, it and was at just... school, like it's available to yes. them. And if you don't have your hat, you yeah. don't go out to play. Yeah. And there's sunscreen in the classroom. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's really interesting because I've got a friend who's coming over. Um, she's actually uh, part of our New Zealand guide and she's we've got like a private community in there and she's coming over and she said, what about the sunscreen thing? She said, because my kids are not in the habit of wearing sunscreen. She's they got will three, be. But that's what I said. I yeah. said, don't worry about it because it's part of your life here, isn't it? It yeah. really is. Like you say, the schools and teenagers. What I love seeing is that the, the parents have drilled it into the kids so much uh, that the teen, it's just, the, it, it's not hip. I don't want to say it's hip to wear sunscreen, but. It's just a thing that you do. It's just yeah. a thing, yeah. yeah. It's not and uncool to no, go and put your sunscreen on. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Whereas again back in the uk it was like oh I don't bother you know just or they want to tan like yeah. is that still a thing yeah i think so oh my goodness yeah yeah yeah, yeah. anyway so that's yeah <laughs> okay so number seven and i absolutely love this one and it took me back especially coming from my family <laughs> in new zealand the parents they encourage their children to have a voice they are just told to speak up they don't they're not embarrassed to speak in front of adults like important adults too, like the doctor, yeah. teachers, you know, it's just nothing. It's just mm -hmm. all, you know, you just speak up and you say what you've got to say. And I love that. Yeah. It's encouraged in school as well. Yeah. Yeah. Because again, at what point do you start teaching them that? I know. And it's not that they're disrespectful. I found it kind of hard to get used to moving from South Africa to England, the kids they're calling adults by their first name. Mm. Because you wouldn't, in South Africa, you wouldn't be Liz to my kids. You'd be Auntie Liz. Yes. Even, with, even if you're not their yeah, aunt. Yeah. And in England, I was like, mm, oh, like, it sounded a bit buddy-buddy. Yeah. But I find kids here, in general, more respectful than kids in England. Do, do you? you find that? Um. Yeah. Yeah, I, I do. I mean, it's I'm going back 12 years and I'm trying to remember, but I just, yeah, I do, actually. I do. They're just more... Even though they're calling you by your first name. Yeah. It, it's different. Yeah. We've always been called by first name. So in England, it would just be, you know, yeah. But what got me was the teacher. I mean, you never, ever call the teacher by the first name. And actually, someone in the comments the other day on, on our channel said, oh, no, I think it was, no, it was the guy, the South African guy, the, um, I can't remember his channel, but it's a great channel. And he's got a family here. And he, uh, yeah, and he, he was talking about it. And he said that uh, what in his comments, they said they call them by the first name in primary school. But actually, when they go to high school, they call the teachers by Mr. or Mrs. But in primary school, it isn't just like Paula. My friend Paula's a teacher. It's fire Paula. Yes. Which kind of means like auntie or yes. an adult. Yes. Yeah. 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 That's right. Yeah. So that sort of like has that. I mean, I'll be totally honest with you. My kids only went to school here for a year and I homeschooled them. So um, they had to call me Mrs. Deacle, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Did they though? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so were you like, we're, we're, we're schooling now and I'm Mrs. Deagle, I'm not mum at the moment. <laughs> no, I'm only joking. I don't know what goes on in homeschooling. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been funny, wouldn't it? No. Yeah, and I couldn't see you enforcing that. <laughs> no, I'd like to. <laughs> but no, it was just that whole thing, the doc, you know, going into the doctors. And even the other day I took tests to the doctors and she, you know, she, um, the doctor that, oh. Yeah, the doctor won't yeah. say, what are you here for? They'll say to 
to Tess, what can I do for you? Yeah, what can I do for you? And she says, oh, hi, Sue. And she talks to her like with her first name. It's like, that to me seems weird. But it's just encouraged. And mm. I think I've told you before on, on, you know, on another chat, it was just when Sonny came here, the first thing he said to me was, they're all allowed to talk. At school, yeah. And it was like, what do you mean? <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. So again, just that, that it, it, yeah, just that. And I think it raises confident kids, you know, to yeah. go out in the world and, you know, I, I've got, no, well, yeah, I'll go on now, I'll tell you. <laughs> if you insist, yeah, I'll tell you the I want to hear it. <laughs> Sonny was friends with this, um, there's a farmer fam- family, family of farmers that live up the road and their son, He's gorgeous, but he's a bit wild. I'm assuming he is wild, that kid. Even for New Zealand. Yes, he is. And, um, you know, Sonny, always, they're always attracted to the wild kids, aren't they? Because yeah. it's like they're much more fun. They look like they're having more fun. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And he loved driving his car around, you know, in the field, always doing those donut things. Yeah. And, you know, he's a good kid, but he's just, he's a, he's a bit wild. And um, they came here once and me and Brian were sitting outside. It, this, this is when he was about 16, 17, bearing in mind. He wasn't a kid. Yeah. And me and Brian were sitting outside having a glass of wine. And Sonny said, I'm just going in Nicholas's car to go to, back to the farm, which literally is down the farm lane. And they're not crossing any main roads or anything like that. Yeah. But I said, oh, just tell Nicholas to come in here. I want a word with him. And Sonny went, <laughs> oh, no, what are you going to say? Like, mortified. You know? Yeah, he was. He was mortified. He's like, don't say anything to Nicholas. And I'm like... No, t- and <laughs> tell Nicholas to come in here. I want a word with him. So bearing in mind, if you were at someone's house and they went, oh, my mum wants a word with you, Nicholas, you'd be scared, wouldn't yeah. you? I'd be like, what have I yeah, done? exactly. Yeah. Well, he comes out and he goes, what can I do for you, Liz? <laughs> 17. Yeah. And I'm like, I just, I just all of a sudden, my confidence just drained. And I said, make sure you go nice and slow in that car. <laughs> <laughs> he's like no no I will don't worry yeah but, uh, yeah just that whole confident thing that's just brought about from a young age like which is it. how you want them to go into adulthood mm, it is it is because even now I get over scared and intimidated by someone important like you know whereas why should you yeah they're just people doing their job it's just you know and that's what again what I love about New Zealand is if you haven't read the watch that podcast go and watch New Zealand people um and also the things that shocked us about coming to New Zealand because it was you just turned up and it was just they weren't everyone was just it feel like felt like everyone was equal you know it wasn't like that snob value and yeah definitely you know doesn't matter where you come from who you are what your lifestyle is no you just accepted Mm -hmm. you are and I love it yeah so can you think of anything else before we oh on the spot yeah (laughs) think of anything else would you say it's better? To, I mean, I know it's hard to say it's better or it's worse, but would you I say found New parenting Zealand? more enjoyable here. Yeah, and I, f- I feel like parenting in New Zealand prepares your kids better for adulthood. Yeah. Do you? Yeah. yeah, yeah, me too. Me too. But, yeah, just have that confidence and just independence. I think, um, you know, just that whole feeling like they can do things and I know that I'm generalizing and there are some kids that don't feel like that but and there's parents who don't allow them to have that independence Mm. but I find it's encouraged here you know you can want those things but find it difficult especially when it is a completely different culture you've come from England you want a parent here let them be more independent Mm. but it's a bit scary to let go yeah but when you have other parents and teachers saying oh they'll be fine let yes. them get on with it yes it makes it easier oh, and it gives you a it? bit more confidence it does it and does. then when you see your child gaining confidence then that kind of reinforces that as well mm. is that what yeah. you've experienced yes it is exactly the same it was just yeah it was just that exactly like you say it's just given that confidence to just um you know I, I think the biggest thing was me was the it was giving the kid the independence and just letting them have the voice and just letting them walk home and letting them make their own sandwich and letting them make mistakes. And, you know, I think that was the big, big stand standout thing for me. So if you're coming to New Zealand, just remember that and try not to do like you know, what I did where it's like, Ooh, you helicopter. Know, yeah. yeah, there's no. Well, I've not encountered helicopter parents here. No, really? No, I don't want them to be. And, and, and I know it's really tempting to just you're always, mm, you know, trying to. You don't want them to make a mistake. I mean, this is a whole different podcast and a whole different episode. But again, that's such an interesting topic because that thing of like letting your kid make a mistake, letting them mm. find out for themselves. That's what Brian's always saying to me. Liz, 
if they don't make the mistake, they won't learn. I'm like, yep, I don't want them to have to go through that. But they're going to, that's what I found is you have to start letting go I know. in their teen years because I would rather they make those mistakes on my watch and when they're talking to me and when I'm involved in their life than yep. when they're out at uni and I'm not, you know, I'm not yeah. around or, yeah. Yeah. I don't know, like yeah. when they're kind of on their own. Hmm. It's a hard job, parents. Oh, it's hard. It? Like, yeah. It's not easy. I love you all <laughs> parents out there. I just love you. are doing a great job. Yeah. That's all I always, always think. It's like good on yeah. you, like, you know, because... Even when you make mistakes, how are we supposed to know? It doesn't come with a manual, does it? Everyone's just doing their best. They are. Yeah. Everyone just does yeah. their best. And hats off to all parents out there. But yeah, <laughs> a big hats off to New Zealand parents. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we're going to wrap up the show today. Thanks so much for joining me. It's Thanks just been me. really nice yeah. just chatting. and yeah, It's always just, good to chat with you. <laughs> it, oh, no, I really enjoy it, Jen. So. Yeah. Until next time, um, we will catch up again and let us know what you think of the episode and leave a comment. And just, yeah, it would be really nice just to you to say what your experience has been of being mm. either a parent in New Zealand or growing up as a kid in New Zealand. I always love hearing those stories from you. Yeah. It's always fabulous. So yeah. until next time, we'll see you soon. See you. Hello. Daddy, I love you. Mother, you. All right, Mr. DeMille, I'm ready for my close-up. Hello.